All right. So we just got the uh, this eight and one insulated screwdriver set in here. All right, they're like this. I figured it was about time to have a pair. I have a uh, a multi uh, like an interchangeable bit uh, Weha um, insulated screwdriver, but that's a little uh, it's a little bulky and it's uh, especially at the tip, you know, uh, just which is part and parcel of having the multi bit. So obviously I'll hang on to that, and uh, if I need some odd sizes or uh, you know odd um, fasteners, you know some of the security bits or whatever, then I can uh, use that. Um, but this this gets all the basic tips. Um, handle is pretty lightweight by itself, has this really nice clicking mechanism. That's how all these uh, different bits snap in there. It's got a real good, nice positive feel to it for sure. You see that? Like, clicks right in there and then pops out with a twist there so that's unlikely to come out unless you deliberately twist on there so yeah so that ratcheting action is pretty nice to you so in the what I figured the cool thing about this is is uh, obviously with an insulated screwdriver the it's only as good as the insulation that's on there so if you if you damage it significantly getting good gouges in there you don't have that uh, that insulation protection anymore so um, if you did do that with this one, you wouldn't have to replace the whole tool. You can just replace these bits individually, whichever one you mess up. So I figure that's probably a pretty good thing. If I were an electrician full time and working in uh, in hot panels all the time, I would probably get the individual ones just so they'd be a little more uh, rigid, I guess, you know. But um, uh, it gets expensive that way. If a full set of uh, insulated screwdrivers that are not interchangeable like this uh, get pretty pricey in a hurry. So. Um, so you got the uh, the two most common sizes here uh, are just on bits by themselves, and then all the other ones are double ended. So yeah, uh, number one and and uh, what was that? Quarter inch. <clears throat> then we got the uh, three sixteenths and uh, number two there, and then another. They give you a duplicate on that, maybe. I don't know. I guess I could look at look at the tips too here. Yeah, you get square one, Phillips one, Phillips two, quarter inch. Yeah, you, there's two Phillips twos. It looks like, and two quarter inch. It looks like yeah. So they give you a duplicate. Um, <clears throat> this one's a duplicate. Yeah, these two. So. Anyways, um, like I said, I've been. Uh, Tend to be I've, in the past have been a little bit of a cowboy about poking around and hot stuff with uh, just normal tools and uh, yeah normally I don't have I've never used like a widow maker or something like that I, you know one with the shaft going all the way through the handle but uh, um, certainly haven't been using insulated tools and uh, uh, there's been there's been a couple small incidents but no uh, no missing limbs or anything or or death so that's good um, but I figured there'd be time to upgrade to this. And, uh, in the interest of keeping these in nice shape and undamaged, they give you this nice little pouch. Little roll pouch. So I think I will go ahead and use that. And uh, I don't know if I'm going to keep these in the daily carry bag or not. I might put them in the in the uh, in the general tool bag, and then uh, not necessarily have them in my tech backpack there. I'm gonna do a video on that soon too. Just kind of my my tool bag setup. I got three main tool bags I work out of most of the time, unless I need uh, specialty tools. So, anyways, that's it for now. A couple more little items here. This uh, oil filter grabber wrench here. Just kind of a different style than uh, I have one of those band like kind of the uh, bands that gets tighter. Is it's just a handle and a metal band kind of thing. I have one of those. And I have a socket that fits uh, Toyota cars. So I used to have one. And this is like another. And this is good for uh, grabbing like anything round and cylindrical really. Uh, you could uh, grab like PVC pipe with it too. Like tighten down a mail adapter or something. So not a bad thing to have I think. And this is an LK sync clip uh, screwdriver. So you know those weird little cone shape uh, fasteners they have on sync clips. This specifically is made for that. It's a nice long handle so you can get up there easy. 
again I'm not a plumber so I don't install sinks every day but uh, I do do it occasionally and so the sink clips is a, one of the major pain in the asses when you're doing that so that'll make it easy so this thing is uh, really easy to use I'll give you a quick demo here kind of slice that in already why am I using my camera stand? What an idiot. Alright, now I'll try this again. So yeah, unstripped Romex here. You slide the this little blade, little slitter in there under the insulation. The outer jacket. And it takes a takes an attempt or two sometimes. Give it a little wiggle. And once it starts, just however far you want to strip it, no problem. Pull that back and clip that off with this guy, I believe. Maybe it's this one. I'm going to cut it. A oh, little flat blade back there cuts it. And then I would probably just go ahead and have my wire stripping pliers out, anyways, but in in theory, you can go ahead and strip it with that too. Um, I'm sure there's a technique to it that I'm not doing right, but I can see that everything, all the pieces of the puzzle are there if you, if you weren't doing that. Try again on the white wire. Maybe give it like a little, little spin. Pull it. Yeah. That's, uh, that's what it says on the package too. And of course, they give you these nice little wire bending loops here, too. Nice little pigtail. You could do a better one than that, too, I'm sure. <laughs> and that one's no good either. I would have insulation in it, but you get the idea. These aren't quite stripped far enough. I think that's the problem. Nope. Anyways, that uh, so just wanted to give you a little quick demo of the uh, ideal low ripper stripper, as they call it. Um, what do I put there? Might have thrown it off a little bit. Anyways, it's a great little tool. It's about ten bucks. It's about uh, worth it. And it works just fine with uh, this kind of non-metallic cable too. I mean. Uh, Romex is on metallic cable also, but this is like kind of the extension cord grade stuff. I'm sure you an extension cord is, you know, yeah, whatever they call this. Uh, it's what mini splits usually come with to wire, wire up them. I forget exactly the uh, proper terminology, but it's like a heavy duty extension cord kind of material basically. Or what a tool, uh, uh, the factory power cord. The, uh, for a tool would be so does this the same with that I don't know about stripping stranded wires that might not work as good with this part but said so the main part you want to work is the, the slit there and it makes a really nice clean cut and no danger of cutting the other conductors <laughs> 